Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we will see a one more concept in our programming that is iterative statements. So this is one another control flow or a, another control structure. So in our previous sessions we have discussed about the conditional statements, right? Where the instructions will be executed based upon the result of a condition and here same set of instructions same set of instructions will be executed multiple times will be executed multiple times right so for example, uh, just a string called ABC, if the same instruction was being executed multiple times, so I will give a print function, print ABC. So if this is executed some four times, so that we call it as an iterative statement. So how we can execute the same thing multiple times? So we, we need not write the same thing multiple times we have to write only once and the same instruction will be get executed multiple times and for that we are going to use one iterative statement called for loop we call it as a loops so the first one is a for loop so here the question is where to stop the iterations so every time the set of instructions are being executed is called an iteration right so i'll write here iteration <coughs> Iteration. Iteration means every time the instructions are being executed. Instructions are being executed. So for example, if one instruction is being executed four times, we call it as a four iterations. Okay, if the same instruction is being executed for 10 times, we should call it as a 10 iterations, right? So here, the question is, where to stop these iterations? So if you are not able to stop these iterations, what happens? It will lead to the infinite loop. So multiple times, it will be keep on executing the same set of instructions infinite times. So we should be very careful while writing this iterative statements because after some finite number of iterations, so the loop should be terminated. The control should exit its termination, right? So one, one such iterative statement, we call it as a for loop, for loop, right? For loop. So here, the for loop can be implemented in two different ways. So one is by using a sequence, a sequence, and another one by using the data structures like a list or matrix or a vector, right? So we can use any one of these three data structures or directly we can use the sequence. Now I will show you the syntax of this for loop in our programming here and let us move on to the R studio and I will implement a small program uh, demonstrating all these cases by using a sequence list matrix and vector so here the for loop will take multiple parameters so the syntax for for loop so use a keyword called for keyword so keyword means a reserved word for open parenthesis give the value give the value use an operator called in membership operator in you can give here the sequence sequence and here we need to write the statements statement so this is a one uh, syntax one way of implementing the for loop right so here the sequence can be written as a sequence of 1 to 10 for example okay 1 to 10 okay sequence of 1 to 10 sorry comma so this implies let us take a small value let us take 1 to 5 so this value will be 
repeated okay the, i i mean the value if the value is available in this sequence then only the statement will be get executed that means the sequence 1 2 5 means 1 2 3 4 and 5 so from the first element onwards from the last element so here we are having some five so there will be a five possible iterations okay there will be a five possible iterations if the value is available in this sequence if the value is not available in this sequence the control will never enter into the loop okay the control will never enter into the loop only if the value is available in this sequence here sequence is one two five so one two three four and five okay so this is how we can implement the for loop by using this sequence another way of implementation is by using a list or vector or a matrix so instead of writing the here the sequence we can write here the list or a vector or a matrix a matrix so obviously it will be starting with the starting element and it will end with the last element Right? So in such a way, the for loop will be get executed. So in other programming languages, we are going to use uh, a syntax like, uh, for example, in C, for initialization, condition, updation. So like that, we have to use a for loop. But here, we are using the membership operator, we are using some value or expression, and it will search whether this value is available in this particular sequence or the data structure. And if it is, then the following statements will be getting executed. So if if this becomes false, automatically the condition, I mean the uh, the control will never enter into the loop. So automatically it will skip from the loop. So at finite number of steps, obviously the value should be false. I mean this this particular section will become a false, right? So if it doesn't become false, automatically the loop will be infinite. The same set of statements will be repeated infinitely, right? So these are the syntax for uh, implementing the for loop using a sequence or these data structures. And now let us move on to the uh, R Studio, and I'll demonstrate each and every case. So implementing sequence, implementing with a vector, implementing with a list, implementing with a matrix. So let's move on to the system. Hello, friends. So just now we have seen the syntax of uh, for loop. So implementing using sequence and the data structures. Now we'll see the uh, direct implementation of all those cases. So how, can, how we can implement the for loop using a sequence and list or vector or matrix. So let us take here. I'll clear all the remaining, I mean, previous output, inputs and outputs. So now let us take one variable. So A is equal to, I'll take, uh, okay, let us, give directly the for loop for so let us take one variable or a value so i in and let us take the sequence so sequence from 1 to 10 1 to 10 and here i just am um, i just want to print i value right so we are just uh, giving i value in this sequence so i will be and this statement will be executed until i value is in this particular sequence okay so first the sequence 1 is to 10 means 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right so until the i becomes 11 so it will be keep on true so that's why this statement will be get executed so once uh, let us execute see you can observe uh, let us give a small values and now you can see 1 2 3 4 and 5 and if you give this one as a star and execute so you'll be getting see five stars five different stars so this is just using a sequence okay just by sequence right so here in the sequence we are having a third parameter that is a difference so let us take some 10 <coughs> and uh, by is equal to 2 so that means it will take a difference of 2 so let us uh, print i value here let us print i value here so you'll get one three five seven nine so you can observe the difference between one number and another number will be two so the third parameter will give the difference over the upgradation updation right 
the first number it will start with one so i value one in the first one and it will be printed within the range right so here the 10 is a stop one right so that will be treated as a termination so whenever i becomes 10 it will be terminated okay so similarly here also you can uh, use uh, any any other updations if i want to update with the three so you can observe the difference or the numbers will be three so one and with a difference of three four four with a difference of three seven with a difference of three ten so it will stop at seven ten because we are giving the stop as a ten right so first the sequence of values will be taken and until the sequence of values this particular statement will be get executed right so this is an example for a sequence sequence now let us check with the list uh, sorry a vector first let us take a vector some b is equal to so vector can be initialized as a c of i'll take 10 20 30 40 50 and here i can give it as a v right i in v so i will be starting with the value 10 and it will terminate at whenever i becomes a 50 so you can observe so all the elements will be get printed so i will be 10 in the first iteration in the second iteration i will be 20 in the third iteration i will be 30 in the uh, th fourth iteration it will be 40 and the fifth iteration it will be 50 so whenever i reaches to the last of the element last element of the vector immediately the control will come out from the loop so until it will repeat so for example if you want to print any other so star so how many elements are there so total five elements are there so five iterations will be repeated you can observe five stars will be here five repetitions will be there okay and also you can give any any, any other uh, versions okay any other uh, expressions i into 2 so if you observe i into 2 10 into 2 20 into 2 30 into 2 40 into 2 and 50 into 2 so like that we can give any 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 other expressions right so but until the i value reaches to the last element of the vector this particular instruction will be keep on executing okay now see this next one is a list if i take it as a list we know that uh, l is equal to list function list of so let us take all the different data types we can take a different data type so i will take it as a, a b c a b c and i will also take some 90.5 float value okay and let us check i in l i in l and here you can see uh, print i obviously the complete elements will be get printed so 10 a b c and 90.5 everything will be get printed so here also similar to a vector it will start with the starting element okay and it will end with the last element right directly it will iterate so here three elements are there so this statement will be repeated three times this statement will be repeated three times so if you don't want to use these type of data structures simply you can use a range uh, that is called a sequence so how many iterations so the same set of statement should be iterated for five times or ten times so give here ten so one to ten right and here uh, give the value like sandeep right so execute so 10 times the instructions will be being executed 10 times okay so the next one is a matrix so we have seen the vector list sequence and now we'll see the matrix so we know that matrix can be created with the help of a matrix command and the matrix function so the first parameter will be the vector of values i'll give, take uh, some uh, four values 10 20 30 and 40 and after that we need to give a number of rows and number of columns n rows is equal to 2 n columns is equal to 2 right and instead of here sequence list or vector we can simply pass m m is nothing but a matrix m is nothing but a matrix see yeah uh, sorry and yeah n row and n column yes so you got the same 10 20 30 40 okay so n row and column so we are giving two rows and two columns and here we are giving some four different values and in all the cases we are printing some i 
or else you can print some any any other uh, character so that it will be get printed so four times a star will be printed so like that we can implement the for loop by using a sequence or a list or a vector or a matrix so the variable i will be pointing towards the first element in the first iteration and it will be keep on moving towards the next elements until it reaches to the last element okay so if you don't want to involve these elements so you can use a different sequences you can use a sequence and mainly when we are going to use the for loop means if you know how many iterations you need to implement so then we'll move on to this for loop for example if my logic requires some 10 iterations definitely i'll go with the for loop so simply i'll give i in a uh, sequence of uh, 1 to 10 right so if i if my logic requires uh, only 5 iterations so i'll give 1 to 5 if my logic requires the elements directly, I'll give the vector or list or matrix, right? So I hope you understood a simple for loop. So this is a one more one, one of the control structure similar to our conditional statement. So this we call it as a iterative statements. So iterative statements means so as we discussed just now, same set of statements are being executed multiple times and at some finite number of iterations that loop should be terminated okay so if the loop doesn't terminates after finite number of iterations it may lead to infinite loop okay so hope you understood everything so if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much